Tulsi Gabbard was uh, away on active duty doing something or another. I don't know. Uh, she tweeted about it the other day. I don't remember the specifics. I just remember she was uh, she was very silent because she was doing some military stuff. So, you know, you would think that the person who led during the primary on I'm the anti-war candidate, you would think that when Biden actually ends a war, that she would be on the front lines defending that, being the public face of, you know, a defender of Joe Biden for doing the thing that she advocated for for a long time. Well, she wasn't. But she does have the excuse, hey, I was doing some active uh, duty military stuff, so I couldn't really talk about it. I didn't want to put anybody in danger, so on and so forth. Okay, fair enough. Well, um, she was brought on to Tucker's show. Now, Tucker nominally brought her on here because the Biden administration did the revenge slash retribution drone strike to go after the ISIS-K operatives and planners who did the airport attack in Kabul. So, Tucker brings her on. He probably thinks, I'm gonna bring her on to do her standard, like, you know, the neocons are bad, the military-industrial complex is bad, we need to end these wars, we need to end them now. If we don't end all the wars, what's gonna keep happening is what you just saw. Civilians are gonna be killed. My guess is, that's why Tucker thought he brought on Tulsi. Well, Tulsi didn't really get the memo, and look at where her commentary goes. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on. So you thanks, get to okay. lie, I mean, this will not shock you because you've seen it so much, but you get to lie about the loss of human life, you get caught and nothing happens to you? What kind of system is that? I mean, this kind of accountability is critical. I, I wanna point out first that anytime there are civilian casualties in war, it is tragic and terrible. Yeah. War is a terrible thing, and, and I think it's important for the American people to understand that Islamist jihadists are continuing to wage war against us. And the Islamist ideology, not the same as the religion of Islam, but this Islamist ideology, which is a political ideology that inspired the terrorist attacks on our country on 9-11, uh, is, is the greatest threat that we're facing right now in this country and the world. It is the foundation of governance of so-called Islamic countries like Turkey and Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia and, and Pakistan. Uh, and it's what's behind the discriminatory policies that they have in these countries against Christians, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, and others. So as long as these Islamist jihadists are waging war against us, we have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. And militarily, we have two choices in how we do that. Number one, we can continue to invade and occupy and nation-build in countries around the world, just as we did in Afghanistan, at great cost. Number two, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes, using our special forces to go in and go after these terrorist cells. The reality is that the cost, the cost to the American people, the cost to our troops, the cost to civilians will be far less if we take this very targeted approach to go after these jihadist terrorist cells than if we continue making the very same mistakes that we saw in Afghanistan and other parts of the world of invasion, occupation, and nation building. That's what's called a false dichotomy. She sets it up as, well, listen, we could either invade and occupy and nation build, or we could drone strike and do targeted airstrikes. Those aren't the only options, Tulsi. You know those aren't the only options. There's another option, which is don't do the drones or the airstrikes and don't do the invasion and occupation and nation building. You don't have to do any of those things. She sets it up as, well, we got to do one thing or the other thing. But wait, this is in the context of a story where those so-called targeted strikes massacred 10 civilians, including seven children. So it seems like the takeaway would be the opposite of what you're proclaiming. You're saying, well, the answer is obviously the targeted strikes. But the whole point of this story is that those targeted strikes weren't so targeted. We've been propagandized all along, this idea that from 100 miles away, our laser-guided munitions can kill a mosquito. That is utter nonsense. Those are lies. Those are lies. And by the way, so what is her direct answer on that front about the death of the civilians? Because Tucker's throwing her a softball. Oh, I guess you could just lie and get away with it. So they lied and said, we got an ISIS-K operative. 
Tucker's saying there's no responsibility for any of this. You're not going to fire the person who did the drone strike. You're not going to go after the military commanders who determined that this was the target. Her answer is, anytime there's war, there's civilian casualties, and it's tragic and terrible. Is that what we'd say if China killed a bunch of our civilians? Anytime there's war, there's civilian casualties. It's tragic and terrible. No, my guess is what we'd say is, that's a war crime. That's a war crime. It's an act of war. They need to be brought up at The Hague. You gotta enforce the Geneva Convention and the Nuremberg Tribunal. Somebody has to go down for this. But when we do it, oh, it's, it's tragic and terrible. No, it's not tragic and terrible. It is a war crime. It is a war crime. The people who made the decision have agency. They should be brought up on charges. Can't just kill 10 civilians, including 7 children, and an aid worker, and say, that's tragic. No, tragic is like an accident happens. War crime is, we just massacred civilians. But in the segment about how we massacred civilians, she pivots right to, the Islamist ideology is the pro the Islamist ideology is the problem. By the way, there's she also conflates Islamism with jihadism. They are not the same thing at all. So Islamism is just political Islam. Now, am I against political Islam? Of course, I'm against theocracy across the board. Duh. But Islam Islamism is not one to one with terrorism. Jihadism is the idea that we're gonna spread. Sharia all around the globe and a strict fundamentalist Sunni interpretation of Sharia at that. That's jihadism. Islamism, there's plenty of Islamist governments that are not doing terrorism. Domestically, they're a menace, and I disagree with how socially conservative they are and all that stuff, of course, but don't, don't conflate the two things. Because conflating the two things is the way that you get people not understanding there's a colossal difference between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Al-Qaeda and ISIS are jihadist groups. They want to export terror. Uh, the Taliban is a guerrilla army, and now they functionally are the Afghanistan government. They don't have global ambitions. They have national ambitions. That's got nothing to do with us at all. So I hate the conflation of Islamism with jihadism, because that's sloppy thinking, and that helps justify us doing perpetual and endless war against them. She says we have to defeat them militarily and ideologically. There is going to be no defeating whether it's Islamism, jihadism, or any of this stuff. You can't just defeat it militarily. That's like saying... We have to defeat crime. Isn't there always going to be crime to one extent or another? Of course there is. So we're going to do wage an all-out war and an onslaught and drone strike shit and airstrike shit? No. That's not... That's not realistic. And what you're doing is you're agreeing to the ideological framework of... Forever War. The exact thing that Tulsi Gabbard positioned herself against. Listen, you... Tucker invited you on to say drone strikes are bad, airstrikes are bad, these are not targeted, and you killed civilians and there needs to be accountability for it. She totally swings and misses, complete whiff, and goes right to, well, Islamists and jihadists are bad, and we have to defeat them militarily and ideologically. We could either invade and occupy, or we can drone and airstrike. I'm going to go with drone and airstrike. The definition of false dichotomy. And if you go down that road, you're going to keep having civilian casualties. And unlike Tulsi, I'm not okay with just some civilian casualties. I don't want any. I don't want any. Would there be more if we do boots on the ground invasions? Of course there would be. But I'm supposed to be okay with a smaller number from airstrikes and drone strikes? I'm not. And by the way, we know from Trump... Because Trump increased drone strikes 432%, and he got rid of the few remaining rules on drone strikes. When you do airstrikes and drone strikes, if anything, sometimes casualties go up. They go up because 2019 was the most deadly of the years in Afghanistan. Because all we were doing was drone strikes and airstrikes. So don't give me the false dichotomy. And if you're going to be anti-war, be truly anti-war. Let's end the wars. The only time we should use violence is when there's a direct threat of violence against us. There wasn't in this instance. And guess what? With Obama's civilian death rate with the drones being 90%, my guess is it doesn't matter who the leader is. Every time they're pressing these buttons to blow stuff up on the ground, they're getting the wrong targets 90% of the time. So it's, it's unacceptable. It's totally unacceptable. And, um, you know, it really is something, too, because she positioned herself as the anti-war candidate. Granted, she was gone while Biden was ending the war, but now you're back. 
And your commentary is not very clearly on the side of, it's a good thing to end the wars. It's a shame. It's an absolute shame. And um, I don't like when I get the feeling that people are posturing and positioning and calculating. What's my lane? Just tell people the truth. Just tell people what you think. And you know what? Maybe she is. And that's an even worse thing to contemplate. That if this is really what you believed all along, the whole I'm the anti-forever war thing was a farce from the beginning.